everybody. So we're out in the shop and I'm just going to do a quick intro here. We are going to be working on a 5160 knife. This one is some of the stuff that I had flattened and then textured. We're making this cool little hunter slash EDC style knife with this little unique handle scale material that I had got a while back and I've been waiting on the perfect build for it. I feel like this is it. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to knock this out. Now this is just going to be a two part series. We are going to release a video Friday, which is when you're watching it now, uh, and then one on Sunday. So that way you have the two videos for the weekend, and there you go. So let's jump into this. Let's get this knocked out. So we're going to start off by cutting the blade out on the port band saw. Now this is just a port band saw by Bauer. It's a Harbor Freight band, band saw, and I'm using... 14 tooth per inch or 14 TPI bandsaw blades on this. Uh, they're by Linux. You can get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. And these work out really well. They're cheap and I can cut out a ton of uh, steel with it. So I, I prefer these. They're probably your better options, but I'm just going to go with this. Now, the table that turns this into a bandsaw versus a porta bandsaw is made by Swag Off Road. Those are uh, pretty awesome tables. You can check those out. They you just Google Swag Off Road, and it's one of the options. Uh, but we just went ahead, got this cut out. I, I cut it pretty close to the profile that we were going to end up with, but we're still going to have to take it to the two by seventy-two and get this cleaned up and we're going to be using a 60 grit ceramic belt this is a slightly used ceramic belt it's not a brand new one uh, but we're going to go ahead and just clean up the profile and get it exactly where i want it typically i go through and i put the handle in my hand a whole bunch while i'm profiling it to make sure it's exactly how i want it but I've used this particular handle shape on a few different knives in the past and I know that it feels comfortable in the hand so we're just going to go ahead and grind it back to where it's supposed to be and go with it. Now we're going to take our big old magic marker and mark the edge and then we're using our calipers as a scribe to just scribe that center line that's going to be our cutting edge once we're done grinding the bevels. And then we're going to use our DIY plunge line jig if you want to know how to make this I have a video on how to make them and they're pretty simple but they're absolutely amazing to be able to get nice consistent plunge lines every single time and it's very simple to make and now that we have the angle that we want we can go ahead and go over to the 2x72 with a used 36 grit belt and start grinding in that 45 degree angle all the way to the cutting edge and it makes it nice because we know exactly where the cutting edge is and we're not trying to follow that line the entire time that we scribed on now what we're going to do here is with that same 36 grit belt we're going to go ahead and just grind our bevels up as high as we want or as close to the spine as we want on this particular knife, I want to show off that hammered finish, so I'm only going to go up to about 3 eighths of an inch away from the spine, so you still have some of that hammer design. Now I did go on the scotch Bright belt before I went to the drill in the holes, just to kind of smooth everything out, but we're using 3 16 drill bit right here 
to drill these holes because we're going to be using 3 16 pins. Now once we got it heated up in the forge to pass non-magnetic, we quenched it in 120 degree peanut oil. I have really good results with this and it's, it's pretty easy to replicate. Now we're going to go ahead and go into the little oven right here at 375 degrees for two hours. Now what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up the bevels with a 120 grit belt and all you're going to be doing is just running this up and down. You're not putting very much pressure on this because you're just cleaning any of the stuff that happened from the heat treat and the tempering and getting back to a nice finish. And what I'll do is I'll do a 120 grit belt and then go into a scotch bright belt. But like I said, we're just focusing on keeping it nice and even all the way across because you can easily put waves into your blade that you'll have to try and chase out. And we don't want that. We just want nice, smooth bevels. Now, once we get them nice and smooth, we're going to go ahead and hit it with the scotch Bright belt. This is just a medium scotch Bright belt. After the 120 grit, once you go to this belt, it puts a nice satin finish on the blade. And that's what we're going for on this particular build. So it's a nice, easy way to not have to worry about doing any hand sanding. And I think that this finish is looking really good. Well, let's talk about it in the outro. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up part one of this two part series. Of course, we're going to have the rest of this knife build uh, release on Sunday. So y'all will get a cool whole build this weekend. It's going to be pretty awesome. I love the way this is looking right now. Remember, this is a 5160 leaf spring that we forged flat and then forged in all the texturing. And then we went ahead and did stock removal to get it to this point right here. So we've got nice satin finish on the bevels right there. And then you can really see all of the hammer strikes and everything on there. The cool thing about this is it's 100% unique. You're not going to get these hammer strikes again. And on top of that, the handle scale material is a super unique material. This is going to be cool. Whenever you start shaping this and we start grinding down and you start seeing all that white pop up in between here, man, it's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, hopefully y'all are digging this little series that we have going on for this. Guys, tell me what y'all think about that profile. I really like this. I think I'm going to make a few more of this particular style, but I really want to hear what y'all think about it in the comment section below. So go down there and tell me about it. Now guys, that's pretty much the end of this one. So if y'all would give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other build videos. Guys, if you have not yet, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you get notified of all the stuff that we have that's coming up, like finishing this, plus some more stuff like this right here. We're doing some more forge welding and all that. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time. Oh, 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 oh,